Mountains into molehills. Story by George Lucas. Russian dude throws out Indiana's hat so the audience can squeal with delight that Indiana Jones has made his arrival. Flensburg, there was twice as many. Indy makes a casual reference to an adventure that would easily have made a better movie than this one. I know they shot their way onto the base, but is the rest of the base completely deserted? No one's gonna ask any questions about the prisoners held at gunpoint or all the dead soldiers out at the gate? Where is it you would imagine I am from? Oscar-winning actress reduced to a cartoon accent. All the mystery of the warehouse from Raiders of the Lost Ark vanished. The contents of that box are highly magnetized. So magnetized that its magnetic field can attract gunpowder in midair from a distance while it's in a crate inside a metal box underneath a whole bunch of other crates. Also, did they really need Indiana Jones for this? What were they expecting him to do? Did they really think after 10 years Indiana would be able to precisely locate a crate in a large warehouse even if he stored it himself? Give me some shotgun shells. Flyers. Old Indiana Jones is really more MacGyver than Indiana Jones. These crowbars amusingly stick to the metal container right after they open the crate, but if this alien box is as magnetized as they say, they should have had trouble before that. What? Now the metal light fixtures are affected by the box? Because the plywood shipping crate was dense enough to keep the magnets from being strong enough before? Why, Mac? Indiana Jones gets betrayed by someone who's pretending to be his friend cliché. Damn, I thought that was closer. Russian soldier guys don't immediately start killing Indy so that he can deliver this wisecrack. Hey, that looks like the same arc from the first movie. Why aren't the lights swaying to follow the magnetic thing in the car Indy's driving? Nobody does terrible aim like Indiana Jones bad guys. Why the fuck would this thing be here? It offers no light, you can't see through it, it's totally fucking pointless. Never construct a secret military supercar launching facility so that the supercar can be launched by someone falling onto the console. Also, here's yet another part of this military base that's completely deserted. The supercar is cool and all, but I'm dying to know what the local prairie dogs might be up to. Ah, oh, well, look at that. I spoke too soon. I don't know if these things are groundhogs or prairie dogs or gophers, but we're expecting six more weeks of winter anyway, bitches. Apparently this thing's only magnetized when Indiana Jones needs to find it in some convoluted way. Everything about the house is fake. The people aren't real, the water lines don't work, but the electricity does, and the TV antenna, and it's turned to howdy doody. Indy is too stupid to spot an obvious nuclear testing town, but smart enough to know in a matter of 10 seconds that a lead-lined fridge would protect him from a nuclear blast. Also, everyone who has ever watched this movie has already dinged this. The only f***ing thing that gets thrown by the bomb is the fridge, and it perfectly flies over the bad guy's car. Let's not forget, even if he survived the blast, this probably should have killed him too. Indy, meet this prairie dog. Prairie dog, meet Indy. One of you is the star of this movie. I'm just sure of it. Even if he survived the nuclear blast and ensuing bouncing flight across the desert, why the f*** wouldn't he die from radiation poisoning after getting out of the fridge so close to the blast site? Look how close he is to the mushroom cloud! Face it, Indiana Jones is dead. Don't believe me? Just keep watching this movie. Just pretend the guy in the suit is a lady, Indy. Take the free scrub job. You mean that Air Force fiasco in 47? Indy makes a casual reference to an adventure that would easily have made a better movie than this one. Don't you know it's dangerous to climb into a refrigerator? Those things can be death traps. Apparently not. What exactly am I being accused of besides surviving a nuclear blast? Did Professor Jones just say nuclear? Sean Connery probably still earned a million bucks just by appearing in this photograph. Also, apparently someone took a picture of Marcus during the scene where he was lost in The Last Crusade and ended up giving it to Indy in a frame. Indy, the government suits, and his unknown illegitimate son all arrive at the train station at the exact same time. Also, how the f*** did he know Indy was gonna be here? Later on, we find out Mutt doesn't even know he's a professor, so he didn't go by the school and ask Dean Charles where he might be. You're gonna kill him! Mutt plays the pronoun game so that Indy has to figure out who they means. Hodgkiss? Hedgekiss? The one he found. Jeez, this server doesn't know to shit, does she? Guy who already had a Coke and a milkshake also ordered a beer. Whoever returns the skull to the city temple will be given control over its power. What's the power? I don't know, kid. It's just a story. Damn, Indy, how many times have you said that and it ever turned out to be a myth? Mary? Mary Williams, you remember her? There were a lot of Mary's, kid. Shut up! That's my mother you're talking about. Well, that's a reasonable reaction. Also, somehow Mutt either doesn't know or doesn't think to tell Indy his mom's maiden name. And why the shortening from Mary into Mary, anyway? Indy turns back over two condiments that in the previous shot hadn't even fallen down. She called me two weeks ago from South America. South America is a f***ing continent, dude. I mean, it's, the thing's pointless, though. It's just, it's gibberish. It's not even English lettering. Kid who grew up worshipping archaeologist Oxley thinks all non-English writing is worthless. Who is this actor playing Mutt, anyway? I feel like he used to be famous. I think you just brought a knife to a gunfight. I have a feeling this was Sean Connery's line before he turned down the cameo appearance for this film. Diner scene suddenly turns into West Side Story. Also, sudden appearance of fellow leather jacket bros just in time for a fight cliche. Get that, greaser! You see, 
Stuff like this is why this movie is bad. Your mom didn't escape. They let her go. So she could mail a letter. Ugh, and you could bring it to me and I could translate it. Huh? Does that mean that she wrote a letter to Mutt while she was being held captive and the kidnappers saw it and said, oh, we better let her go so she can mail this and instead of just, you know, taking it from her and mailing it on their own? <laughs> what? Everyone is walking through the library like they don't hear a guy riding a motorcycle through it. I mean, don't you clear out as soon as you see some shit like this? <laughs> this is the first of the Wilhelm clan to go to college, I believe. Excuse me, Dr. Jones. Steven Spielberg tries his hand at directing a Zucker Brothers film. The Russians are looking for me to kidnap me, so let's go back to my apartment. Where I live. Where it's a matter of public record that I call that place my residence. Let's go there. Mutt combs his hair in this movie so many times the continuity person on this movie started to lose track. Nobody speaks that hasn't been heard aloud in 3,000 years. I might be able to read a bit, though, if I walk it through Mayan first. Those two languages are not related. Indiana Jones movie rips off the traveling by map thing from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Pancho Villa. Technically, I was kidnapped. Indy makes a casual reference to an adventure that would have easily made a better movie than this one. All tiny dirt road villages in South America have sanitariums. <laughs> this fan must have been turned on today after not being in use for 10 years. Crazy, crazy. Birth. <laughs> Oriana wasn't born in Peru, he was born in Spain. Why didn't Indiana make this connection before? He translated this letter in the States and should have known immediately that the word didn't mean birthplace for this very reason. Ox didn't mean Oriana's birthplace. Oxley left a lot of things to chance for people to find him. He wrote a riddle in a dead language that had to be walked through Mayan to be translated. He carved a picture of a cemetery in his cell, a cell they only found because Indy speaks some language that, oh my god, Pancho Villa's guys apparently taught him. It would have been amazing if Oxley could have found himself. He's been wrapped up for 500 years. Indy rounds 400 years to 500. Is this one open already? Hey, I need a line that points out to the audience that this one's already open. You know, just in case they can't tell by looking. Once again, none of the other metal things in the general vicinity of this dead guy are being pulled toward his chest plate. Mutt's knife even waits several seconds before being affected by this thing. Magnets! How do they work? Maybe the Spaniards found the skull along with all this other loot. Maybe the Indians caught up with a murder. Good archaeology always leans heavily on speculation. He put it back where he found it. Why? I don't know, but we should definitely do the opposite. Bad guys lock up Indy in a gynecology chair. Also, where's all this electricity coming from out here in the middle of the Amazon? I mean, generators, sure, but damn. How many f***ing generators for this tent alone? Ukraine girl turns the dial from straight up to the next notch on the right, but it's already in that position in the previous shot. It was not made by human hands. Who made it, then? Come on. Indy's reaction is exactly what the filmmakers should have thought before making this movie. Indiana Jones. See? See this? You'll like this movie because we just referenced this other movie, right? Oh, the writing. I should have seen this. Yes, you should have. He was obviously moving his hand in a writing motion. Henry Jones III. Mutt's last name is Williams. So he's Henry Williams I, technically. He grabbed the rope! Grab, Grab the, the rope. rope! Indy is a five-year-old. This would have torn the snake in half. Good work, Ox. Thanks. Honestly, did the Russians actually need Crazy Ox telling them where everybody was? They were all yelling in the quicksand, so they should have found everyone pretty easily. We interrupt this Indiana Jones sequel to bring you Avatar. The Russians decide not to learn their lesson and just throw away Indy's whip already. He vanished after that! Vanished? Where could Indy vanish? In Raiders, the year is 1936. At Temple of Doom, it's 1935 for some reason. And in The Last Crusade, it's 1938. And he's banging that Elsa chick in The Last Crusade. So in 1937, Indy and Marion must have had an everyday normal relationship where Indy introduced her to his friends, including Oxley. In all those years, Indy is still a professor at Marshall College. He couldn't have gone anywhere for a long time, at least not by the context clues of the other films. Doesn't the driver hear all this commotion in the back? It's not like there's a solid wall between him and the passengers. Also, aren't there other vehicles behind them that could see this? There is. And of course, they didn't find his knife and confiscate it. Why would they? Oh, so wait, there's no one behind them? Look, either there is or there isn't cars behind them. Either way, it's dumb to have your valuable prisoners, especially someone as sneaky as Indiana Jones, riding in the back of a convoy. Okay, I have no idea where everything is in relation to each other now. This anti-Greenpeace tank was at the very front of the convoy, destroying trees. Indy's bazooka shot hits it on its side. How he hit it at that angle, we'll never know. Now, if something comes off the tank and hits this truck and bounces over two other vehicles, Indian crew are way in the back here. Wherever he shot this thing, he's in no position to do so. And what the fuck is going on? A boat car? We better swap this truck for that boat car. No telling when that might come in handy. What are they shooting at? It's a good thing Mutt told us he was good at fencing earlier. I'm glad that paid off randomly here. Great, we're gonna see Mutt do some sword fighting, but... 
Couldn't he use that gun that's on the front of this thing? Are we still on the road that was created by the rainforest killing machine? Mutt's on the hood here, but finds himself in the backseat in the very next shot. Am I wrong, or could the driver move slightly to the right and this fight would be over? Also, Mutt is about to run right into a tree. There's really no stopping it, but right after Indy hits the Russian car, the tree becomes a non-factor and the movie does the cute little Mutt and Spalco switch car stunt. <laughs> Come on, this dude should have been knocked out after one hit. The skull's amazing, remember? Also, Skull somehow loses its magnetic properties again. Oh well. Indy's car behind is like 50 yards behind in this shot, but then magically only 10 feet behind when Mutt falls. Mutt falls backwards and flails wildly, but the skull is somehow thrown forward enough for Spalco to catch it easily. What are you looking at, Daddy-o? Dude, the f***ing gun! You're propped up against the solution to this problem. I miss Stan Winston. We interrupt this Indiana Jones sequel to bring you a game of f***ing pitfall. Mutt just caught up to speeding vehicles by swinging on vines. Also, the monkeys of the Amazon are anti-communist by nature. <laughs> None of these people died when the car was run over. Big damn ants, go! Big damn ants. Where the f*** have these guys been all this time? How did they know to drive here? I'm starting to think these guys are using blanks. If ants that could eat you this quickly actually existed, I'm pretty sure South America would be completely uninhabited. Thank God the killer ants have carved two separate paths around this fistfight so that Indy doesn't get eaten. I mean, I know Ox took out the skull and the ants scattered around him, but why do they continue to separate well after passing the skull? Here's a perfect opportunity to cut the ropes and kill all the bad guys. Soon to be wasted. Mom, slow down! This guy calls Mutt's mom, Mom. That's the idea! Bad idea! Give it away, Mom! Trust me! Okay, so Marion saw this tree a few minutes ago and actually thought to herself, yeah, this tree will catch this vehicle and lay us gently into the water later. <laughs> Reality. This boat car somehow travels a hundred yards in the time it takes the tree to snap back up to the top. This kind of sh kills people. What the actual f Okay, so remember how they got in here. They pulled these rocks out, the sand came out, and this bullshit happened. Then they fell down into the place. So this should only have to ever be done once. Because who's going to fill all that sand back up and replace all the stones that keep the sand in? Yet they are dead adventurers on spikes down here, who apparently got this far before. Who's in charge of getting all the columns back into place in the sand refills? Magnetic, and now all the gold has lost interest in being attracted to this skull, and the other coins that were moving I guess gave up. Guy who stole treasure ends up dying over it, cliche. Thanks for putting that skull back on my body. Now, f*** you. Also, how did the skull get torn off the alien's head in the first place? If the aliens have a hive mind and all this power and someone walked into the chamber, how would a puny human be able to get close enough to cut the head off an interstellar being such as this? Then steal it, then leave the pyramid. I mean, did the whole thing with the sand and the booby-trapping stairway and the chamber you can only get into by sticking a crystal skull in it get built after the skull was stolen? And what the f*** for? To make it harder to put the skull back on the alien? Who the f*** did what and when in this story? Alien Spaceship Palace has a built-in mechanism to shoot wandering humans out of harm's way before liftoff. Man, so much bullshit just happened, I think the dinger might have broken. But their treasure wasn't gold, it was knowledge. And also that shitload of gold that was down there. No! Oh, thank God. So you're firing me. A leave of absence is all. Meet Flower. She's the leader of a 29-strong family of meerkats. The Jets are gonna have their day tonight. The Jets are gonna have their way tonight. Are you suggesting that I killed my wife? Are you saying that I crushed her skull and that I shot her? When I came home, there was a man in my house. I fought with this man. Uh -huh. You find this man. You find this man. threatened with treason if we ever talked about it. So you tell me, what was in the box? We What's in the f***ing box? You want a player who doesn't have the guts to fight back? No, I want a player who's got the guts not to fight back. They're thieves. They're thieves. They're filthy metal thieves. What happened? Where'd he go? Y'all get a Peter Pan right here off of this dam, right here.